We fought for freedom. The, he oppressed Europe. My God, they had a terrible time in Europe. just wanted to do my part for the war, and I was able to uh, successfully get through it and help the other guys. It was dangerous, which is something that 19-year-old doesn't worry about. started I was 18 years old and naturally uh, like all other American boys I wanted to fly but I wasn't qualified at that time I had to go through a year of training uh, it was not something it did in two minutes and the first day we were port for duty the operations officer said are you qualified I said no he said, how about high altitude formation? I says, no. OK, to take off on number four, over. It took me out for 12 hours a day for three or four days. I never flew co-pilot again. I always flew pilot on my first mission or second mission. A piece of flak came through the front of the plane knocked out the feathering buttons and hit me right here. <laughs> and I thought I was wounded, but it was nothing. He wore a flak suit, and it would hit the flak suit, and that was it. I got you, you can If I was gonna get shot down, it happened that I threw my dog tags away because it happens that I'm Jewish. We didn't know whether they were that bad, but they were. It was unbelievable what went through their mind. That mission was um, against the um, ball bearing factory, and this was critical to the German war effort because we knocked out their oil, we knocked off their transportation, and ball bearing factories. Engines don't fly without ball bearings. There was never any real doubt that he would be able to bite off what he started at you. Hitler would just tell him what had to be done, and, but really when we knocked out his railroads and we knocked out his oil, he was destined to lose. It was no joke, it was really serious business. We 
were lucky, but we also knew what we were doing. The uh, last mission I flew uh, was between the first and second atomic bomb. And I recall a flight leader on the radio saying as we were over Japan, look off to your left 50 miles over there, see that black spot. And uh, we all looked and he said, that is Hiroshima. Uh, it was after the bomb had been dropped. And somebody got on the air and said, hey, can we go over there and take a look? And he says, no, we got work to do uh, in other places. I'm Roy June, and this is my story. I uh, had always wanted to fly airplanes, and I'd built a lot of models. So uh, about four or five of us uh, in the fraternity got in a car and drove uh, hundred or so miles over to Butte, Montana, where the recruiter was, and uh, we uh, all indicated that we uh, decided we wanted to uh, join the uh, Air Force, Army Air Corps, and fly airplanes. The recruiting sergeant asked, uh, he uh, said uh, to me, uh, would you like to join the Ar uh, Army and be part of the Army Air Corps cadet program? I said yes, and he says, all right, take one step forward raise your right hand and uh, I did this and he gave me the oath and uh, he, when he was done he says welcome to the Army Private June. We were get, getting some uh, uh, music and shoveling snow and all of a sudden they broke in and, and said uh, Pearl Harbor had been bombed by the Japanese. sorts of speculation and rumors because the news had been pretty short. Uh, but the consensus was among uh, arrogant young college kids, uh, this war won't last long. The Japanese all wear glasses and they can't shoot anyway. Uh, and uh, as time passed by, we began to see in the news how much more serious it was. given Mustangs on, on Hawaii, and I think I had 10 hours in the Mustang uh, before uh, uh, we went to, uh, to Iwo Jima. The Navy had been diving from, or bombing from high altitude, and as the target shrunk, uh, the accuracy became harder and harder to maintain. So General Smith of uh, the Marine Corps asked uh, our General Moore if uh, we would uh, do uh, uh, some bombing and strafing on the north end of the island for the uh, Marines. Those were our first missions going up on the north end of the island and bombing and strafing in areas uh, designated by the Marines. Uh, it was kind of interesting uh, they had a briefing before our first mission and they said now there will be a yellow line. It will either be a, a smoke, yellow smoke line or a tape line. And just remember that the good guys are on the south end of that tape line and the bad guys are on the north end of that tape line. So our first missions were way north and uh, we got back down and the Marine General said, well, can you get a little closer to the yellow line? So uh, the next mission was a little bit closer, but still wasn't where they wanted the bombs dropped. And General Moore, I can still hear him saying to all of us, we do one more mission and we do it right, or uh, I'll send you all back to the States. And he got us upset, he got us mad, and we went up and we dropped the bombs and, and did the strafing exactly where we were supposed to. That was the first four missions in my uh, combat career in World War II. 
Well, I had uh, a, a family that was very active. Uh, my brother was in, had enlisted in the Marine Corps, and uh, my father had been appointed on the War Man Power Commission and had uh, also uh, served on a, a committee for uh, rationing, both gasoline rationing, tire rationing, shoe rationing, and that sort of thing. So the whole family was very conscious of the, of the war effort and what was needed, and uh, everybody in the family, uh, we felt all of us were doing our part. <laughs>